African Acity is Paul Kihuha turning scrap metal into affordable film equipment. We love African Acity and believe in working with you to get things done. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am sure that I am sure that. At the end of this one and a half hour session, we'll be able to acquire relevant nuggets and insights that are critical and very relevant. Before we get to the nitty gritties of this program, this being a virtual session, I would want to share with you some housekeeping rules. Our first housekeeping rule is that this is a virtual session and we expect all participants to mute your mic. Unless unataka kuongea, you can unmute yourself and you can hear your voice. We also would want to not notify you that this session is being recorded. And at the end of the session, you will be able to access the recording through our YouTube channel. You can sh give somebody, share the link at the end of the session. I would also want to encourage you to Participate as much as you could in this session, posting your questions, your comments on the charts. Just give us a thumbs up, ask a question, engage us as much as you could. And at the end of the session, we will be able to get to do a polling just to get a quick feedback. And we expect, we request you to participate in the polling. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, I would want to know where you are joining us from. How are you feeling today? I am joining from the APSA headquarters, the Western Building. I'm feeling so excited. I'm extremely excited to have you on board. I am looking forward to just having a few people, if not all of us, just share where you're joining us from so that we can be able to know where you're joining us from. Just, just, just continue, just continue giving us your charts. Just, just go on the chat and let us know where you're joining us from. Welcome those who are joining the session now. Just tell us in the chat where you're joining us and how you're feeling today, just to keep the conversation going. So for those joining, uh, we're just doing some an icebreaker just to let let you let us know that where you're joining us from. We have representation all the way from South Africa, from Mombasa, from Machakos, from Kasarani, from Kitui, from Komarok, from Pwani. In a nutshell, the whole world or the whole continent is, is following this conversation. Quite exciting. Keep, keep the conversation going. So ladies and gentlemen, at this moment, I would want to introduce to you our 
power panel for the day. Our first speaker for this session is Christine Orono. Christine Orono is a people business partner and people change and culture lead at Absa Bank Kenya PLC. We are so delighted to have you on board, Christine Orono. Our second speaker is none other than the one and only Caroline Mutoko, who is the general manager, Omni Channels Radio Africa Group. We are excited to have you on board. Our last and the final speaker for the day is Timothy Kimani, a.k.a. Njugush, the undoubted king of social media comedy. This is a power panel, and I'm so sure at the end of the one hour or one and a half hour period, each one of us should be able to get one or two nuggets that are crucial to help us navigate our careers. Just to talk a bit of, uh, about the Ready to Work program. Our Ready to Work program is an Absa Bank Kenya program that is critical to us. And we would like to just to share a few minutes from our first speaker to delve more about the topic of Ready to Work. So welcome on stage, Christine Orono. Can you give her some shout out? Just, 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 just thumbs up to, to welcome Christine Orono on, on stage. Whoa, welcome, 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 Christine. My pleasure to be here. Christine, how are you? Very well, thank you, Hilary. I'm so excited to have you on board today. Me too. Looking forward to interactions around issues that could be personal to you and also some general issues that the audience could be able to pick one or two nuggets. Sure. Just to start us off, who is Christine Orono? How did <laughs> it start and how is it going? Christine Orono is, I am, I'm, uh, I'm working currently at Absa Bank Kenya Limited. I've had an, uh, a career with Absa for the last, it's going to 28 years, and I'm very happy about um, working at Absa. I, I work within the people function, uh, what other companies call the human resources uh, function. And uh, really my role there is to you know, support uh, our people to be the best that they can be, to deliver the business objectives. Other than that, I'm also a career coach. I, I love the aspect of work, uh, coaching people around finding their best self and really understanding who they are in terms of their talents, their skills and their strengths so that they can deploy them appropriately in the work that really uh, brings out the best in them. So that's who I am. Where it started, is that what you asked? Yes. It started many years ago, like I said. My first job, I, I, when I left school, I was actually a first employed as a, a cashier uh, in a restaurant. And you know what? I, I was trying to remember the other day, uh, I was earning 800 shillings. I mean, today, what does 800 shillings, what's the value of 800 shillings? But that's where it started, humble beginnings, and uh, those are some of the things I'd like us to discuss. Wow. Humble beginnings. Punchy. It has a way of shaping who we become yeah. in future. Just, just, just to, to get the conversation going, you work as a senior business partner, human resource business, people business partner at Absa Bank Kenya. And Absa Bank Kenya takes pride as an organization that partners with the, the society just to make ready the young people for the next roles and just to take up their careers. Please talk to us a little bit about the Ready to Work program. Thank you, Hilary. The Ready to Work program, uh, which is uh, you know, a big pride of Absa uh, Bank Group uh, across Africa, is a program that uh, is, is there to equip our young people, particularly you know, students who are transitioning from learning to earning. You know, you've just come out of school. Uh, maybe it's high school. Maybe it's university, college, uh, whatever stage it was. And you're, the, we're transitioning the, the students 
into the world of work, helping to, uh, them to understand how the world of work works. And uh, some of the aspects of our Ready to Work program include work skills, like the subject of today's webinar is really around work skills. How do you get yourself ready for the world of work? How do you understand how, you ca how, how to compete in a market that is crowded? Uh, where you ca how do you stand out? How do you make sure that you're able to pr present yourself and what, what you have to offer the world? We also offer within the uh, Ready to Work curriculum entrepreneurial skills. How, if, if you choose to go the self-employment route, what are the skill sets you need to be able to get ready for that? How do you deal with money? How do you um, uh, work with other people? The world of work uh, requires each and every one of us to partner with others, collaborate with others. None of us works on our own. And so one of the big pillars of our Ready to Work program is, our peop uh, is around uh, developing p the people skills of our, of, of, our, of our youth so that they can be effective wherever they, they choose, the, uh, the, whichever path they choose in their careers. So basically, uh, ours is to really uh, you know, build the future of Kenya to build the future of our nation in terms of the resources, our human resources, uh, 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 work with our students. Uh, we also run scholarship programs. You can find all this information in our website, and uh, I'm sure you'll be enlightened. One of the other things you will find in our website is the, 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 the Ready to Work curriculum is open to all, and uh, we encourage each and every one of you who's logged in today uh, you can share this also with friends. We have a ready-to-work curriculum that covers these areas that I've, I've mentioned broadly. So that is our ready-to-work program, Karibuni. Thank you. That is a, a great highlight of uh, what ready-to-work is all about. And I would just encourage the participants in the audience, even if you've not been able to access the portal, please make sure you, you check it out. It has a lot in store for you. Building up on uh, just a question around being ready to work. I've been pondering about it from my personal experiences where it started. I don't know whether I was ready. What does it mean to be ready? Are there certain rituals? Are there certain disciplines that one probably like their signpost that now I'm ready? Could you just highlight a bit about this readiness? Thanks, Hilary. Um, I, you know, I spend a lot of time with young people, and, and that's one thing that I feel that, w you know, we can, uh, uh, an area that uh, many young people require is um, how do you transition from, you know, being a student, being dependent on your parents, uh, to a point where you are able to, um, you know, you have the right attitude, skills, and knowledge to, to compete in a world, in, on, in the workplace. So uh, being ready to work is, uh, is very important in that um, each and every one of us, you know, when we leave school, uh, school does not teach us uh, anything about work, the workplace, you know. And so uh, programs like this uh, help us to, to really impart uh, knowledge and skills around what it takes to, to thrive post-school. Into the workplace, what attitude is required of you? How do you relate with people? Uh, it's, it's really uh, uh, walking the young people through um, what, what does it take to get a job, you know? We, you know, you don't just leave school and enter a workplace blindly. Um, there's a lot of, 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 of research you need to do. There's a lot of information you need to arm yourself with. The workplace has its own rituals. The workplace has its own uh, uh, ways of working. So, for example, you know, we talk about, um, you know, for you to, to, to get a, 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 a job, you've got to go th various, through various, um, uh, can I say, th uh, processes, you know. Yeah. So you've got to make an application. You've got to be able to uh, create a CV that can present you in, the, you know, in, the, in, in, in companies, in organizations. Uh, you've got to be able to present yourself and talk about yourself, present what you can do for the potential employers. Um, you, you've got to be able to understand how the workplace works. How do you relate with uh, fellow co-workers? How do you deliver results? It's not just about the knowledge we have. So, so when we leave school, we leave school with knowledge, academic skills. We've learned a few things in the college. Um, but you need to be able to translate that knowledge into skill sets, skill sets that actually deliver results. So in the workplace, the language changes completely. You know, we no longer talk about, you know, grades A, B, C, D, uh, or scores in, in ex exams. 
we, we now get to a point where your, your work is, is, is uh, assessed differently. Uh, so being ready to work is really having a good understanding about how the workplace works. How, do, how, do, how will you thrive in the workplace? How, how, what is required for you uh, to, 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 to deliver uh, to, the, you know, to who you really are? understanding yourself, and so on. So it's, it's a, a very wide and broad field um, that we deal with in Ready to Work. Thanks, 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 thanks for that, Christine. And just, just to elaborate, just to talk uh, a few highlights on what I've picked from uh, your comments. You've talked about the value you bring to the organization. You've also talked in the equal length uh, on understanding uh, the culture or more about the organization so that you can be able to fit in. I would want to just take it a notch higher. 2020 has almost turned around humanity in, in, in several aspects. And certain things will never change, probably. One of the things is just the world of work. Tied to that, reports by Josh Bassin, reports by World Economic Forum, reports by KPMG and major, major research institutions indicate that the world of work has been completely, has completely changed. And th this brings me to the next question to you, Christine. What do you see is the future of work? What are the relevant skills that you see from your professional practice as a people function practitioner, we've moved away from human resources. We are now in the people, human capital management. From a human capital uh, manager, what, and from your personal experiences, what do you view as the critical skills for the future? Wow, that's a loaded question. We could be here for a while, you know. Uh, one of the things that you will find is that the world is, uh, you, you know, the major shifts that have happened uh, in the workplace. So, for example, you know, even when you look at ABSA Kenya, for example, most of us are actually working from home. So there's been a big shift towards, uh, you know, work is no longer a place to go to, you know. It's, it's it, it, you know, the boundaries between work and life have really been blurred. So you'll find that... Um, so work now is, you know, it's not about clocking time, you know. We're, we're seeing a situation where, you know, you're given an outcome to achieve and nobody, uh, you know, is, is, is supervising or micromanaging you. You're supposed to manage yourself to deliver the, ex the results that is expected of you. So that means you can work from anywhere. As a matter of fact, you know, you're seeing uh, across the world, people are moving away from cities even into now back to the rural areas. Probably there's an, an urban rural migration already happening. So, so now one of the things, skills that then it become very evident is self-management. You need to be able to manage your time, manage your outcomes in, to, 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 uh, without the, the need to being micromanaged. So you see in the past, work, uh, in the workplace was very hierarchical. We had managers, we had team leaders. So now today with the way we are working, people are now having to manage themselves wherever they are. And so that requires one to have the right attitudes, a can-do attitude, one where you're able to collaborate with people virtually. That's a very tall order for many of us who've been used to working close to people and you know, collaborating face to face. Now that has changed. So virtual skills becomes very important uh, in that environment. You know, now we are, we are collaborating through uh, virtual tools like Teams, we're using uh, Zoom uh, uh, communication and so and the like. So that requires us then to be able to adapt to this uh, new world of work. So um, uh, with this constant change, then one needs to be very adaptable, very resilient. We don't know where the next change is going to come from. So one of the the skills that are a must have today is resilience. We need to be able to, to, to be flexible enough to change when the situation demands, you know. All of us need to, to have a, a, a mindset that is open, flexible, work from anywhere, a kind of an approach. Uh, one where uh, you're, you're able to collaborate with people in other parts of the world. That means culturally the boundaries have, be, have, have, have also been uh, brought down. Uh, today we are working, you know, with people in other parts of the world. You need to be able to be culturally sensitive. So, I mean, for the young people today, the landscape has significantly changed for you. You need to be able to, th uh, to, th to transcend culture. Uh, you need to be able to think 
uh, that you know globally you need to be able to 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 uh, uh, deliver results wherever you are we're talking about managing yourself and we're also talking about being savvy with technology being comfortable with the tools and skills and uh, tool sets that we're using today which are very different from where we have come from that's just a sample of some of the things i am seeing a big drive towards use of technology in our workplaces a blend between human skills and technology skills uh, is what is required in the coming world. So we used to talk about our future, but the future is actually here. We're talking about a world that is completely different from what our parents, our grandparents worked in. I hope that gives them a taste of thank what you, it's thank like. Thank you so much. I know that the topic around the future of work and uh, future skills is a broad one, yes. but you've given it a very good uh, summary. I now would want to open it out, uh, open it up for uh, for the audience, just to engage Christine. You can ask one or two questions for Christine to to be able to answer. So you can go to the chat and or the Q and A. Let us know your questions to Christine. We, the audience, up, it's, it's now your turn to to ask your questions. We also want to just to recognize the fact that we have. People joining all the way from Mandera, from Kisi University, from Moost, Kakamega, from Turkana. I mean, it's, it's all over. We, we are so excited about it. So kindly ask your questions. I think one of the questions that we, we that came through the chat was uh, to Christine. What motivated you to choose the career path that you have adopted today? Or what, 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 what was the thinking behind it? Was there some motivation to, to choose the career path that you, you chose? Okay, so Hillary, unlike um, the youth today, I didn't have that opportunity where I was well exposed to career fields. Uh, like, the information wasn't there. So when I started off working at ABSA, uh, I just joined to do anything. <laughs> Sounds a little bit uh, naive, isn't it? But the reality is, when I joined, uh, when I started working, I didn't really have a definite career path that I was pursuing. So I actually found myself in the human resources function by default. It just happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, so, but w one of the things, you know, sometimes I meet a lot of young people who say, I don't really know what I want to be when I grow up, you know, and that's okay. What I normally say is that uh, the attitude you need to have is let me try out various things and, f and you know, find where I, 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 I settle. So that's similar to what happened to me. It's basically, I found myself in the human resources function and did whatever I was asked to do. And I, I think, you know, it goes back to something that we read in the Bible, whatever your hands find to do, do it at your best. Because sometimes you might not love what you do, but you can develop love for it. So, so what happened is uh, I then, um, you know, began to develop an, uh, you know, an interest in the human resources uh, practice and with time uh, you know even went up to upskill myself and do some courses in human resources and found that I was actually thriving so from the feedback that I was receiving from my managers and from the different people I worked with they, th they thought wow you were made for this so I've invested a, a huge amount of time in developing myself in this field and uh, so in, you know back to that question I really didn't choose the field but they choose, uh, I think the field chose me. <laughs> <laughs> so I found myself here, uh, decided to do, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to develop excellence in whatever I do. And uh, with time, I also discovered that my attributes, my skill sets matched very well with uh, requirements of uh, becoming a human resource practitioner and therefore went on to develop myself further and continue to, to, to build the skill set required to thrive in this field. So I can say I grew from the bottom up, you know. I developed myself from the bottom up. I, I didn't have any uh, com uh, unique advantage over others, but I chose to um, invest uh, in myself to become the best I can be in this field. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christine. This is the next question from the audience is uh, rather from a professional perspective. What do you look for in a CV? Very direct. Wow. If I was to begin to do a CV workshop, you know, I normally do a CV workshop for about three hours. But let me give you some few pointers. Um, a CV is a marketing tool. 
it's, it is a tool that represents you before you present yourself physically to an interview panel. So a CV is not supposed to be a, bi a, bi a big biography about yourself. You think about it this way. When you're walking in the streets of Nairobi and you get these brochures, product brochures, that's what a CV is like. It's like a quick way of attracting attention of, or, or, or to yourself, you know. And so um, a CV is not supposed to be so detailed. I usually give uh, guidelines that a CV should be no more than two pages. Uh, a CV should contain highlights of what you can do, who, what you can deliver for the prospective employer that you are targeting. A CV should also be targeted to the potential employer that you are looking for, not a generic document. So many of the young people I see doing uh, you know, a, a mass production of a CV and sending the same document to all employers without tweaking it, without customizing it. A CV needs to be customized, but it starts off with a very good understanding of one, who you are. So you need to be able to document you know, who you are, what you can do, your skill sets, and so on. Secondly, it must be, you must be able to, to, to understand the organization that you are targeting. What are their needs? They usually produce um, uh, job advert, you know, job, job description, spe uh, person specification of who the kind of, kind of person that they are looking for. So thirdly, your CV then needs to be customized to bring out the best of who you are, bringing out how you meet the need of this potential employer. So miss, most of the time we think a CV is just a generic document, you'll send the same document to a bank like you will send to an advertising company. It can't work. It's got to be customized. So a CV, brief to the point, clar clear what have you done in the past, why should anybody hire you, why should anybody consider interviewing you. The CV is supposed to get your foot into the door. Yeah? That is what the purpose of the CV is. It is not supposed to give you a life history. I see some CVs in Kenya where we put our height, our weight, uh, the village you were born in. Those are irrelevant details. The details you put in the CV should be objective, very clear, matched to the job requirements that have been presented by the potential employer. Anything more than that is, uh, uh, may, may actually become subjective information that is used against you. you know? So if you put your height your weight is 200 kilos. What do you expect people? People will begin to imagine who this person is. <laughs> so objective, it's a business document. It needs to be printed in a you know, business language. It needs to be on white paper, you know? Now, anyway, nowadays we're not even doing it on paper. We are using electronic means of transmitting the CVs. So a CV needs to be, you know, a document that represents your abilities, your strengths the achievements you've had from the past, uh, in your past engagements. Now, if you're a student, you've not worked anywhere, there are things you have done whilst you are in college. There is a way in which you can demonstrate your skill set, the little skill set that you may have developed whilst you are in college. Maybe you are a leader, uh, a student leader. Maybe you're a captain of, of a sports team. There's, there's evidence and information in there that could be useful to an employer to see the potential that you have. Thank you so much, Christine. Uh, I believe CV writing is a, a, a whole topic for an entire day discussion, yes. but you've given it a very good summary. In the interest of time, we, I will, I'm only going to ask you one question, and I'll, I'll just beg the pardon of uh, the audience that we may not be able to answer all the questions. Probably we'll find a way of uh, maybe reaching out. I think one last question is, uh, which is also relevant to, to this audience is that, how do I present myself during an interview? How do you present yourself during an interview? If you're going to meet the president of Kenya, how will you present yourself? That's, that should be a guide for you. Now you're going to present yourself to a potential employer, yeah? Whilst we don't want to be over the top, you need to present your best self, yeah? So it goes to basics. Dressing, your grooming, yeah? It's got to be appropriate, yeah? Think about the environment where you are presenting yourself. So every organization has its culture, uh, has its, uh, uh, the way in which they, they work. So how you present yourself in a bank may not be the same as how you present yourself, say, to, um, you know, an advertising company or a radio station like where Caroline Mutoko works. It's a very different environment. So you need to understand how that environment works. 
and how, how, what, what is acceptable in that environment. So in the past, in banking, we expected people to be formally dressed when they come for an interview, yeah? Whereas another environment may not require that. So, so dressing is number one, grooming your presentation. Remember, first impressions, they last, yeah? Sometimes it sounds a little bit cliche, but the reality is it's true. Many times we make judgments about people based on how they look. It's not fair, but to start with, let them see a b the best part of you as you present yourself there. So that's one. Secondly, before you show up at the interview, way back, you need to know the story. What's your story? And that story is not one that you're going to be making up while you're sitting in the interview. It's a story that you have, you, you, you have, uh, you know, you have built over time and convinced yourself of it so that when you present yourself at the interview, there's conviction even in how you communicate. Yeah? So do you know yourself? So there's always a popular question, you know, and Hillary works in the human resources department like I do. Who are you? Tell us about yourself. And I see people cringing, you know, like they can't describe themselves. So I always tell young people, even way be be before you start applying for jobs, can you write a 1,000 ar words article about who is Christine? Can you describe yourself? Convince yourself of words that truly describe times. We pick them from books. We pick cliche words. I can work under, se uh, I can work under, under minimum supervision. And we know that. <laughs> you pick that out of a, you know, a CV site somewhere on the internet. You know, it's not authentically you. So can you learn to describe yourself uh, authentically? Many times, many of us have not been trained to talk about ourselves. Because we're taught to be modest. We're taught to, you know, it's too boastful to talk about who you are, you know. But... Let me tell you that as you, you know, as you begin to uh, go out there and market yourself, you need to be able to describe this product. Who is this product? Who is Christine? What can she do? What can she deliver? What is her passion? What drives her? These are questions you need to have answered way before the interview. Even by the time you are putting the CV, it's, it's, these are words that should be consistent right from the CV document into the interview room. Many times we don't take enough time to understand who we are. And that really uh, impacts how we present ourselves in the interview. Because you don't come out to some, as someone with uh, conviction. You don't come out with somebody who's authentic even as you're communicating. It just feels like they, you, you, ov you overnight start uh, uh, browsing the internet on how to answer CV interview questions and you just regurgitated what that. So for me, it starts with in here. Before you go to the world out there, Start in here. Take stock of who you are. Self-reflection. Understand what you bring. Ask your friends. If you're not sure, ask your friends, wh who is the best of Christine? What do you see as my strengths? Uh, and, um, pick up from your past experiences. What have you done great? So that when you appear in the CV, in the interview, you're also able to describe that to some good detail, and it will look authentic. But when you are just rehearsing a few days before the interview, it doesn't work. So young people, even right now, start that process. Understand who you are. Get comfortable talking about yourself. That is the first step towards interview, uh, acing an interview. That's all I can say for now. Again, an interview skills training can take uh, as another two days. Oh, thank you so much, Christine. The, the comments are just flowing it's, it's, it's a buzz in here, and uh, the audience are really excited about, about your comments and, and about the insights. But in the interest of time, we may not be able to go through all the questions that have been posted. And at this moment, I just want to give a big shout out and big thank you to Christine for your invaluable insights to the audience. I believe that it will, it will be a moment for one to go and reflect on certain nuggets that they've been able to pick. Thank you so much, Christine. We appreciate your insights. Asante. It was my pleasure. Thank, Thank you,
Ladies and gentlemen, it's my utmost pleasure to introduce on stage our next speaker. This is a known and a household name. We call it the Radio Queen, Caroline Mutoko. Karibu sana, Caroline. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. Welcome to the session. Thank you, Hilary. I would like to pick up from where Christine left off, Great. if you don't mind. Yes. I love that um, this is about learning to earning. And I think the earning always excites you if you're young. However, I think it's very important for me to mention the learning never stops. And the minute the learning stops, the earning also stops, without a doubt, without a doubt. So I know you're th probably thinking, I'm going to graduate, Caroline. So, you know, I don't want to see another book. Um, the truth is you need to continue learning. And sometimes you must unlearn and relearn because what you know today might not be relevant in three years. Um, Christine also spoke about the resume. Um, could you please do it today? Yeah, I'm that speaker. I'm going to give you homework. And could you put it on LinkedIn? Because chances are Christine will come looking for you on LinkedIn as opposed to you sending out that singular resume that you've written to everybody and not customized. So um, today, your resume with that, I mean, I know you're on Twitter and you're on TikTok and you are on Facebook and you're on Instagram. You must be on LinkedIn. Very important. And then, of course, um, I need to say this. Uh, maybe Jugosh will mention it. But social media is also telling us a story about you. I mean, I'm lucky I grew up in a world, because I'm like 96 years old, but I hydrate well. But I grew up in a world where there really, really was no social media. So the resume I presented you is the only one that existed. Um, today, the truth is, there is the resume you write every day with every single post and every opinion you put out there. However, I know that you were giving me 15 minutes, and I just want to say three things, and I'm going to... I'm going to confine myself to my working life from the age of 17 to about 23, 24, okay? So the first thing I'm going to say is hit the ground running, okay? It's very easy to say, you know I'm tired. I've been in college for four years and I cannot do this anymore. Um, the truth is, I've been working since I was 17. I'm tired. I'm really tired. Um, I finished Fort Form on the 20th of November and on the 4th of December I was at work. And my job, oh, Christine, I earned more than you. She said she was at 800 shillings. Oh, I was at 1,500. I was bawling out of control at the time. Um, but, it, and it's taken me a while to articulate what my job was, but I was a messenger. If your job is to pick up invoices and drop off invoices and pick up statements and drop them off and pick up checks and take them to the bank, you are a messenger. It doesn't matter <laughs> what you sound like. That's what I was. And if I'd never done that job, I don't think I'd have been ready for any other job that came after that. So please hit the ground running. And I know there are people who will say, I cannot do that. And that's fine. But I also wanted to remind you that the working environment is a living organism, but it's also almost like a club and a network. If you're inside a job, you can find a job. But when you're at home doing nothing, the job is not going to come to you. It's the same thing they say about dating. You know, your potential girlfriend is not going to fall from the ceiling, you know, while you're sitting at home. Okay, that was supposed to be funny. Could everybody please laugh a little? Okay, super. So it's very important you hit the ground running, get on with it, and get on, get your skates on. Just get into the work environment. Working is like a muscle, okay? The more you, you exercise that muscle, the better it is. It gets better and better. Um, while you're at it, hone your people's skills, okay? So throughout life, there's a lot of things we will say that we want out of you. And your resume is fantastic, and you know, how much money you make, and the car you drive, that's all very well. But the biggest thing you'll be able to capitalize on is your social capital. And the reason I say this is that I worked as a waitress, so I'm taking you through my work journey. So remember, messenger, messenger, promotion! Uh, but this time I was at the University of Nairobi, and we had a couple of closures because stone throwing was also something we did part time. I, I was never one of them. I just want to say that. But every time there was a closure, I had a job. So I worked as a, as a waitress in three different establishments owned by the same person. I worked, if you drop into the CBD um, in Nairobi, 
and you go to Trattoria, now they'll tell you she worked here. I was a waitress and a maitre d'. I put menus in envelopes and I went up to people and said, um, table for how many? So I did that job. Um, and I did that job in high heels as well, you know. But it wasn't just that. I also worked at a restaurant that no longer exists called Forrester and I used to do um, evening coffee. And then after that, I would go check on dinner um, at both Trattoria and at Visions, okay? Now, if you hang out with me, um, you probably think, oh my goodness, she gets such great service because she's Caroline Mutoko. No, it's because I've worked with most people in the service industry. So if you go, if you're ever in Nairobi and you go to Jacaranda and you meet the head chefs there, his name is Matagea. If he hears I'm in the establishment, he comes out to say hi and he reminds everybody, and you know, you don't think it's a big deal when you're 18, 19, 20. The truth is, every person you encounter from here on is going to have a bearing in your life in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s. So hone your social skills. Make sure that whatever establishment you get into, you leave with people who say amazing things about you. If they encounter you five years, 10 years later, they're like, yeah, she's kind of awesome, okay? Bloom where you're planted. You're not going to get the job of your dreams right away. And right now, to be honest, your dreams look a bit like Elon Musk. And pff, no, I'm so No, no, just no. OK, I need you to bloom where you're planted. And, and the truth is, if you actually enter your first job, wherever it might be, and you're very clear is, this is my stepping stone, or this is my treadmill, this is where I'm going to horn me, you're going to do exceptionally well. But to be able to bloom, you need to take in everything that place gives you. So take in the soil nutrients, if it's in, in understanding how business works. Take in the chlorophyll, if it's in understanding how um, revenue is made. I, 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 I get very confused when I meet young people who have no relation between their input and their salaries. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's imperative that you are not only blooming where you're planted, even if it's in a desert, but you're also insistently getting as much as you can out of that environment, okay? And I also need to say here at this point is that now your personal brand is being built in a big way. And I'd like, if you'll allow me, please let me know when I'm running out of time. I'm going to give you two examples because it's okay for me to speak theoretically, but I'd like to be able to put, you know, names and ideas to it. In the last couple of weeks, and I mean like in the last three weeks, I've encountered two people, two totally different um, industries. One is a young man called Stephen Zhao. He's probably about 27, 28 at most. He works at, um, um, at Inchcape. And in the three days I had to actually encounter him, I was amazed at the thoroughness and the genuineness of the way he handled not just himself, that he did what he said he would do, but he represented the organization so well, such that if he's the only person you ever meet from Inchcape, you're sold on the establishment completely. And I don't often meet young people who have such an amazing impact on me. I keep asking myself, I wonder where else you will do well, okay? And, and if his boss is listening, I'm not looking to poach him, don't worry. But he's the kind of guy who made me think, so you've done this job for four years, but you've, you're genuinely in love with what you do and you genuinely want to give the best. His personal brand, in my estimation, is already done. Absolutely. The other is a lady out of Rongai. Her name is Penina. I mean, when I say Rongai, I'm saying, Peter Konabari no wendele. Okay? No wendele, no wendele. For a little while. And she um, is part of the housekeeping staff at a place called Champagne Ridge. And it's not just the way in which she handles her job. I remember her checking on me twice as we headed back to civilization because, hey, uko nimbali, let's not kid ourselves. And at some point, one hour into the drive back, she called and said, muko salama. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Uh, please understand this. She is your typical Maasai woman, completely. I don't think she's ever left Rongai. And like two hours later, she called and said, nilko, ntaka kujua, muko sawa. 
Let me tell you, she has every GRO, every guest relation officer I've ever encountered from here to New York to the world of in Dubai beat hands down. I had to call her boss and tell her boss how great she was. I don't know whether I'll ever see Panina again, but she left an impression on me. And here's the thing, today, sitting here, doing, you know, ready to work for ABSER, I'm talking about these two people because of the impression they've left on me. Um, the last thing I think I want to say is grow yourself. Christine was being polite when she was like, oh, do more. Oh, for heaven's sake, let me, let me just be honest. The organization is not your parent. No, 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 no. I will require you and the world will require you to consistently grow you, okay? And you will do that by taking the course, whether it's online or offline, paying for it yourself. I know, you just went, <gasps> Carolina Nongevi Baya. Imagine I'm not. I took myself to school three times. And if you're not interested in growing you, I can't want for you more than you want for yourself. But when the people around you see the effort you put in bringing out the best there is in you, because there's always more in you, the chances are you will find people consistently who are like, you know what? I like what she's doing. I like what he's doing. I think I want to carry you most of the way. Um, so put in the time, hone your skills, and if you have to unlearn, relearn, do it, and do it consistently. Number one, it keeps your life really exciting, and I know I haven't been in a learning space since 2013, and I can tell you I'm itching to get back into a classroom. Not for what the lecturer will tell me, and this is the exciting thing about, um, I don't know how many of you have graduated. You know that line that they say at the end of your graduation, you've been given the power to read? It literally means that. It means that now that you have graduated, you have the power to go and seek more knowledge. So don't let graduation be the end. Let it be the beginning. And then let's go from learning to earning and then learning to earning more. And I think I've been told to shush, so I will. <laughs> learning to earning, and then, then earning more. Learning more and earning. And learning more and earning more. There you go. Wow. Yeah. I mean, uh, the comments here are just exciting. One, one of the things that is standing out from the audience is your quote to bloom where you are planted. Yes. I mean, what, 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 what else could you be able to say? I mean, reading through your, your, your bio, I am, I am so interested in a line that says that uh, Caroline began her radio career at Capital FM where she w was working for only seven days a week at the radio station. Caroline was not entitled to any remuneration, but, but she was earning excellent life skills that molded her to become a renowned radio presenter. Who told you that? In your it's a secret <laughs> that I was not earning for six months. <laughs> yes. In your final submission, mm -hmm. what are these relevant, excellent life skills that you learned that could be relevant to this young, budding audience who are really looking for the opportunity to excel in their careers? Oh, wow. You know, in those first six months at, at Capital, where I wasn't earning anything, um, I, can, I can set up a radio station today because I was able to be in the room when antennas were being ordered and the mixers were being ordered because I know the specs. Remember, you're interning, so yeah, you get a little stipend, but it's not a salary. And because you're a gopher, and gopher means you, do, you go for anything, go for coffee, but I just want to stick with the technical part for a moment. If it wasn't for that time where... I used to do the traffic updates. I don't know whether anybody knows that's how I started in radio. I, I literally used to go in from 3 o'clock until about 5 o'clock and do Uhuru Highway busy but moving. That's the opportunity they gave me. It was like two minutes, um, twice an hour. That's all I got. But bloom where you're planted. 
I was good enough at doing just that to be able to be told you can do something else and do something more. And I was getting radio skills. Remember, there was no media school in my day. I, 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 my first degree from the University of Nairobi is in economics and maths. It does not prepare you for media. It does, however, prepare you for a certain way of thinking. And that's the other thing. University teaches you how to think. Don't you dare drop out of college. Back to what I was asked. Don't, don't you dare. Um, but, but I was learning. I, I made coffee for Phil Matthews. I was learning what it was like and what drove him from 6 a.m. until 4. Because he, he, was, he was running a radio station but running a morning show. So, you know, you think, oh, my God, she was getting coffee. How useless is that? I, I, I had access to the biggest name in radio for four to six hours every day. I was part of the guts of putting that thing together. You cannot, I was, I was not being paid, but I was literally going to school for free, for free. So those six months were just powerful, powerful. They, they, they created everything I am and was in media and in radio, without a doubt. Wow, wow, Th thanks so much, Caroline, for, for your insights on the same. Now we want to open it up to the audience. You could ask questions directly to Caroline, post your question on the chat. Our, our first question is from a student, okay. and I will read it verbatim. Caroline, I'm a student in marketing, mm -hmm. and I'm also interested in pursuing a career in communication. Mm -hmm. Are these two fields related, or do, I do, or do I need to take up a course in communication? I can take it up again, or you've got no, it? No, I got it, yeah. I got it. So, <laughs> Marketing is, a, is literally the art of communicating the language of brands and products and services, all right? So if you're doing marketing and comms, you've got the two relevant skills to be able to be effective. Um, and I think, you know, when, when I look at the industry I'm in, um, radio in particular, I know we've got many other facets, uh, um, you, the ability to communicate the marketing message for ABSER the ability to communicate the marketing and the promises of any brand is what makes or breaks the ability to deliver that particular product to its target audience. So in answer to your question, if you're doing marketing and communication, you've got a fantastic um, cataclysmic you know, synergy of, of, of skills. And I, I really hope you'll use them well. I really do. Thank you. Uh, uh, the other question that is coming through the, from the audience is that as a result of COVID-19, mm -hmm. many people have lost their jobs. True. In your opinion, mm -hmm. what careers stand the test of any challenge? Wow. <sighs> you know, the first thing we all learned, let's not even kid ourselves, medicine. <laughs> medicine clearly cannot be overwritten. Because if there's one thing COVID-19 has done for all of us is made us a lot more aware of, 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 of health matters, but not just from a very clinical standpoint, but also from our nutrition and our lifestyle standpoint. Um, but also, and I think, you know, I, can I give you homework on this one? Please go through the internet and figure out what was designated as essential services. And there is your answer, okay? Banking, money, uh, money transfer. Um, and also, we, we kept talking about a digital world and a digital future. If there's one thing COVID-19 did, is it instantly digitized the economy. In, in overnight, overnight, we were all here. It's where we ordered food, toilet paper, the works. So I think, first and foremost, you know, we all can't be in what you'd call essential services. But when something like this happens, how quickly do you also lend yourself to the need of the moment? And I think for me, I've always believed that young people have one major um, skill, um, and that's agility, to be able to, to turn and do something else. I, I have no idea. Your finger is covering it. <laughs> okay, yes. It's just, just alerting us that you're yes, running out of we're time. running out of time. Yeah, I think uh, we, you may be able to take one more question. Uh, I usually have divided attention with regards to career I wish to specialize in. What really should guide my career choice? Ah, that's a beautiful, beautiful question. And I, I guess it's going to be my last. <sighs> The thing you do that hums, okay? 
the things you do that you do. And then there is a space you're in where you can feel your rhythm lends itself to it. And you're not tired when you're doing it. And you're not fed up when you're doing it. And you're not complaining when you're doing it. That's the one. And the beautiful thing about being in your 20s is that you've got about five to six years to find that thing, the hum, the hum, the hum. And I know the hum is true for me. Um, I don't know whether I mentioned this to you, and it wasn't in that little you know, dossier you got from the FBI on me, but I was, I was a banker. I was a management trainee um, for two years. Um, banking was not for me, not the way it was constituted then, because bankers didn't believe that money was an FMCG. Money is an FMCG, so fast moving consumer good, trust me. But um, then I got into radio and I had the hum. I could do it. I had to work at it. I worked seven days a week, Monday to Sunday for a very long time. Um, waking up at four is not funny. Uh, it, it, but I could do it and do it for 14 years. Why? Because my body lent itself to it and I was excited to wake up every morning to do it. That's how you find out what is great for you. Great. Yeah? I hope I've answered that question. The hum. The hum. You can feel it. It's a rhythm. And when you're there, you know you're in the right place. I would want to request you to, in your parting shot. Oh, wow. What are the two key success factors to this crop of audience. These are young people who are the future of this nation, the future of the world. What would you tell them are the two success factors in your own opinion? Oh gosh, number one, never arrive. I think there's, there's this thing of when I'm 30, when I'm just, never arrive, never ever arrive. And you know, coupled with that is um, don't stop reaching for more. Don't stop digging, you know, inside yourself to find more. Never arrive. Do more than expected. Do it better than expected. Uh, that, that for me is so, so, so key. And my second one, which literally is my last one, because I'd like to hand over the baton to the next speaker, who's cooler, funnier, but thank <laughs> God not prettier than me, um, is um, talent without discipline is nothing. It doesn't matter how talented you are, if you won't put in the time and you won't put in the work and you won't be disciplined about it, if you don't have focus, you don't have drive, you don't have fortitude, look it up. Um, you, you can tell us all you want about how funny you think you are. Oh, this is the, the other one we get in media. My friends tell me I have a voice for radio. Um, you know what, we don't care. Do you have the personality for it? Okay, you, you talent without discipline, your grades and your first class honors without the discipline and putting in the time, the work and the effort is a waste of time, completely. Hard work will beat you every time, every time. Thank you. Wow. Hard work will beat you every time. Every time. What a parting shot. Caroline, we are so excited to have had you in this mm -hmm. session. We look forward to hosting you again. I would love to come back if you'll have me. Thank you so much. Thank you, and good luck. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our last but not least panelist and speaker for this session is none other than Timothy Kimani, a.k.a. Yule Mbaya. Njugush.
welcome on stage. Asante sana lakini ni yule mzuri sasa. Asante sana thank you so much for having me. Sasa I'll have a problem kukaa hapa. No, Nimeona Karo amekaa hapa. Anaongea unajua but we will try. Unajua sisi vitu tumezoea ni za kinyozi. <laughs> I'm moderating a session with Njugu. Uh, you just laugh throughout anyway. Mm -hmm. So, Njugu, yeah. oh, Timothy Kimani, for yeah. that matter, yeah. before we begin the conversation, allow me to congratulate you for being named among the top 100 most influential young people in Africa by advanced media. I mean, who else? With the names of like Sadio Mane. Asante. What 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 an achievement! Asante. You've also been nominated uh, in the digital category for a digital award, and I actually won. And you won. Yeah. Congratulations! <laughs> we got to Rituanga, what to Ghana, Nigeria, <laughs> South Africa. Um, it's actually the Africa Digital Award. The Afri a, Africa a Digital, digital award. Influence, influence of the year. Of, influence of the year. Award. Yeah. Asante sana. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you so much. So who is Njuguna? We know you on stage to be yeah. now nowadays naona umeanza kuinua. Nishati ndogo sasa. Nishati ndio ndogo. Acha nikae hivi tu. Nishati ndogo. Najua his dream career is maybe to go to weightlifting and become a bodybuilder uh, someday. Well, well. Yeah. Um, I think I uko sidani nitakuwa na but I I think Njugush is uh, tall dark and handsome. Um, <laughs> but Jugushi is, is the eyes of the whole oh, beholder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think um, Jugush um, is, um, is 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 as a character. I wouldn't talk about much about Njugush because I don't know Njugush very well. Because all I know is he came from Ushago and he's trying to make it in the city. But now as Timothy Kimani, now that's the guy who is here. So Timothy Kimani is a guy who was born in Meru. I uh, was born in Meru and of course I've gone through different primary schools. I went to seven different primary schools, not because I was naughty, but my dad is a reverend. So walikuwa na kaka hapa na pigwa transfer, tunaenda. So, but I'll talk when now Timothy Kimani began making Jugush. So that was after I left college. I went to one of the best schools in journalism. Sisi tukianza kuweka ate, ate who was in this school, itakuwa documentary. Uh, it, it is the best school for journalism. So I went there and I did my three years. Um, by then I was still acting, but mimi siku wanajua. You know when growing up, a lot of these things we are seeing today weren't there. Hungi ambia mzazi nataka kuwa DJ. Hanguza kwani unakuwaga na vitu zingine wanasema nga kwa kichwa hakuna. So being an actor, yes, I was acting in, 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 um, uh, in um, Sunday school, but I didn't know one day this is what I'd be doing. So, so what I'm doing, I'm learning. So after I'm done with my college, I've gone to the best um, uh, 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 media school. I'm a graduate, and now I, I, I'm in KBC for an internship. Your internship, I a record one week, and then I quit. This is the reason, because the school, uh, by then, that was my last year. Na shule walikuwa naenda Mombasa. The, by then, the drama festival was in Mombasa. So I was like, I've never gone to Mombasa, so I want to go to. Two, um, hii kazi, aki kuka, unona kuka hivi, kwa kit, um, kutoka saa mbili mpaka five. Sisi ni wala watoto tulikuwa, tunashinda tuki, tuko hivi. That's why nasema hapa, ndashinda nikifanya hivi. Because you find, hatuna kutulia. So, um, after the one week, I was like, apana. So I could go and rehearse. Then, long story short, we went to Mombasa to Kashinda, and that's where Abel Mutua saw me. That's a story in Taletambele. So I didn't know he saw me. So I was like, I So upon Kumaliza, I was like, I was I go to every media house I know in town. Hakuna. So I'm about to go back home. So I was like, I was like, I CV. I was like, Madam Christina, I said, I'm going to go back home. The only thing in the introduction letter is different. Maybe that's why I didn't get the job. <laughs> so I went to all media houses and, and I, I couldn't get. So after I'm done, uh, I get a call from Abel Mutua. I'm like, who is Abel Mutua? So they're starting a show called Habakule News. They want, so when we discuss Habakule News, I said, Aki, you are in news. <laughs> Lo and behold, Habakule News is a parody, was a parody news show. So we do a news. So we do a parody. So it was not an actual news. So I uh, Abel, the first thing I'm going to say is that I'm going to say that you have a vest and you have a shirt. I'm like, why? Because I'm going to play a role in the game. 
So this is not what, what I wanted to do. But you see, I found myself in this space. So uh, long story short, I left Ile Drimiangu Yakukua journalist with all my papers in Kazia Kakando, and I came in, and um, now I'm acting. So, and there's something Caroline said about driving where you are. And I think it's the same with our mothers. When we were growing up, I could see our mothers with Kiondo. They didn't have phones then, so they could have Kiondo. So when they are waiting for other mothers to come, and Nawaombe Pamoja, so they are suing Kiondo. I'm a sweater. Most of us, we know to sweater to measure newa. So when they are weaving, weaving, before they, uh, the other come, they are doing something. So that's what I did. So for me, I wanted to be a journalist. But see, I've been planted here for acting. Acting I've always done, but I remember the first salary was 800 shillings. Na I was able to get TV. Actually, I was able to get 800 shillings. So, last time I was able to get a job, I was able to get a job. Otherwise, I was able to get a job. 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 I was able to get a So, but for me, it was passion. And, and this is something I didn't know that could make money, but it's passion. It's like waking up to eat. I always say, my, when I grow up, I want to be um, an attacker kushindana kwa competitions kukula. But it's something we love to do. So I loved acting, and this is what I, I did. So again, intenda ni kiguza points. Um, about how jawa ifika, how to ifika. Because people tell me, ah, sasa unasikianga, how to ifika. In hapakula news, ni kiingia hivi, few people saw me. So I thought I'm famous. Unasanimi, unamutu moja, hakuna kitumbaya, kama fame kidogo. <laughs> Unafikiri umeomoka, but ujaomoka. So I, I get this cafe in hapakula news, and now we are somewhere with Abel Mutua. Abel Mutua anajulikana kutoka Tahidi Hai. So tuko hapo, msiana anakunya nasema, can I take photos with you? So ni kathani ni with us. So unaenda pale, Abel Mutua is here, uh, the lady is here, I'm here. The lady told me, Toka, mtapigwa na ye, badai, enda utupige. Eee, hey, hey, I thought tulikuwa tunapigwa, ateju niko famous. So, hapo ikanidonia, kumbe bado sijafika. So, I had to work hard, and I came from being uh, just a mere actor, and I went into actually being a director, because about thriving where you're planted. So, what I thought, nimepatiwa script. Is script anyone wana naezani piga? So, you have to add your ka character kako. And these characters, the, the Njuguna character is a character that came long before I joined college. I had done set books. So set books unafanyaga kila kitu until you know what you're good at. So coming to TV, nikaulizua unataka kwenda na character gani. This is another thing. Whatever you're planted, grow your time juu kwa hapo. Nikama tuko hapa, kuna socket. Charge simu juu haujui. In the next minute, unatoka. Hakuna kitumbaya kama tuko hapa, umeona socket, haucharge simu, unacheza videos, mukitoka diyo kwa huu, niko 2%. Unafaa kuita kaa butadu. So this time I'm here, ndiyo na Rijiri Chad. So I went from being an actor and I became a creative director. Mbaka nambu, ambia hawa wengine. Na nimi wakuta hapo, ambia wengine, vido watafanya hiyo script. Na ambia now guys, vido mtafanya. And it felt so good. So we did Hapakule News, it blew up and grew to Real Houses of Kangware. Iyo, sasa ikawua. Sasa sinimeacha kukua ule wa Hapakule, sasa najulikana sana. Uka umoka. Lo and behold, in 2015, uh, um, vitu zika happen, it's a long story, but I quit. So, nengia kwa market. Mimi all this time, nimekuwa nikijomi ni mdedli. Kutoka huku nje, kumbe, watu hawatambui hiyo komedi yetu. Wanaonaga hiyo komedi yetu. Which is a good thing, I'm happy. Ni kama zile za kina mama kaya hii. Which I'm happy. Juhu, likuwa nasema, comedy is a stand-up. Ndiyo comedy. But hii minafanya ya nini, kuvaa malinda. Siyo comedy. So, I'm out here. I'm trying to prove myself. Ndiyo nipate gigs. But wana niangadi, haia, wea ni wanini. Bado mko kawango wale. Eh, okay. Eh, so, calligraph. Ulikuwa nasema aje. I'm like, hata mini comedian kama wewe. So, be, when you think umefika, haujafika. So, tuko hapo, but mina jiamini, jumimi niko fiti. Tukaka jobless for a while, and then something happened. BBC came calling. They had a show called BBC Sema. Sa hii niko vibaya. Hakuna kitumbaya kama uko na fame na hauna kakiru. <laughs> and that's something I'm going to talk about badai. Um, naongeaga sana, nikiongea sana, unanikatiza. Eh? So, <laughs> so, um, BBC Sema calls for, uh, they want, a, uh, BBC Sema was a show about governance. Na you the mambo ya governor, hawataki mambo serious. So they needed a comedian to break it down. Now two things, discipline and, um, uh, discipline and education. So the reason why they needed a comedian, see at Yawakuwa now, the comedian when Yalikuwa, he was indisciplined. Alienda akakunyua, so haonekanagi, so that's why your chance is kriyotika. And I'm happy nowadays he's changed. Yo, chance ka kriyetika. So when we, I came on board, kulikuwa na komedian kama sita. 
kama wanne ni wale wa stand up wa kushika microphone eh the comedians mimi <laughs> niko hapo wa Malinda so najiangalia hivi nashindwa hata nitafaulu sasa hiyo nilikuwa nimekopa mrembo wangu amenitumia 70 bob nitoke kino niteremke mpaka tao sasa sina ya kurudi uko hapa sasa unajiuliza maswali hawa naulizana umepaka wapi unaona <laughs> yes <laughs> unaona hiyo kitu so i'm there i'm like sasa nitafanya nini but you know nini nilinisaidia kupenya hapo we are often tumekubalika that's why we've been called there but there is one thing na nilikumbuka saa hiyo so after tumeulizwa nikaweka kitu unaona hii kujiuza nikasema i also did journalism they like wait what you unajua tunasemekanaga wasanii hatujasoma <laughs> which is not true so nikaulizwa ulisomea wapi Kenya Institute oh, maso mireke ah wisha so hiyo imeni set apart even without kuongelelea that's how i got one year contract na hiyo one year contract ndio tulifanya na harusi hatukufanya committee but bila ilisha ikaisha hivyo so after there now what do i do again so that's when now online came all this time i had online digital but this time something happened we have a few followers i'm just doing content because i'm no longer on tv so i have a lot of content to chant so i'm chanting wale watu wa comedy ya microphone tena wa eh na the, the rest wakakuja hey, ati anapeleka comment di facebook <laughs> kenavia ebu kamia this one ebu repeat nataka kupeleka comment di facebook they laughed at me yeah. nilikuwa naitwa mchome which is a beautiful thing i think in all this ina kuchocha and that's why nasema ga when you see guys pulling you down ina kuchocha it motivates you to do better so, cuz those guys motivated me so when they said me sina platform ingine they have other platforms so sisi tukaingia online and we started doing that what made me no it's worth it there's a guy who came and told us i want to pay uh, for that content muweke product yangu hapo nikashinda kwa nini unanilipa na hii instagram do you know for instagram it's like it's like you're having fun it's like co curricular activity but someone is willing to put money sasa niko na manager i want to look like i'm very how many minutes naambiwa na ongeanga sana five oh. yeah, i try to to weka everything pamoja so this time um um I'm told uh, tulikuwa wapi Unfortunately na ongeaga sana tu Instagram yes yeah so that guy comes and says uh, naweza ongea na manager wako niko na manager wapi sina manager ni wife sasa hiyo tumeoana uh, manager anapiga simu <coughs> nasema let me give you to my manager manager wangu akachukua simu akasema pa video unajua hatukuwa tunajua unachaja how much akaitisha video moja kama tunataka kufinya sana 5000 <laughs> Na sasa hiyo tuko na deni ya, ya ya rent. So we needed 50,000 to be okay. Okay? Na hapa amekuwa 5,000. Mimi na mimi ni nani? Jogosha hapo akaamuka, usapere ikaamuka. Nikasema so that we make 50,000, we'll do five video times 10. Tulifanya video kumi. Nani anakuambia alilipa? They only paid 5,000 and we posted all the videos and we really invested mpaka nikaomba camera na edit and this something else lazima hakuna mtu hii dunia ati ametayarishwa anakuwekea carpet you must learn ini kitu siko nimelearn shule ku edit but i had to learn to edit even today i edit my own stuff because tunasema ga mimi sikufanya hiyo ukipatana na hii unaingia mimi online siku anajua nimetoka ushago actually my friend ndiye alifungua all my social media accounts Z- uh, ni my friend alifungua anaitwa Gerald alafu akaniambia ati sita kuforo hauna followers saa hii huwa na mbroke nikitaka <laughs> ako na watu 400 who does that um, so so hiyo time ilikuwa ya kujijenga so after that guy did that i felt really bad mpaka nikafungua um, i wish i could be able to show an email account ndio natumia kwa youtube ya Tugi inaitwa Jimmy Advocate Advocates now Jimmy Advocates or to show him we are a company and we have legal career fraternity Unajua <laughs> najaribu kuweka. So Jimmy Advocates ya kukuambia hearing copied is whatever you hakuwai lipa mpaka wale wanangojea. But that taught me at something. People are willing to put money. So what do we do? We have that 4000 followers. So what if inge kwa 100000 and that's what we did. So we went back kuchapa kazi. Ju, you are losing nothing. Nikuchukua camera and kama kuna time poa kuisha I think it's this time where, where we have online. I'd rather I have 10000 in my pocket straight then we make a million and it has to go exactly by the time na kufikia and you're doing the bulk haiko so and if you look at what we have now for the young guys is there is that space kila mtu and it's so wide kila mtu wako na nini yake kuna wenye wanapika wengine wanafanya it's so wide 
and they're getting money in their pockets. But now this is the problem. When does money start coming in? So before that, before now proper money started coming, we really worked at Mbaka unaona ni kai kitu unapotea. Na wale watu wa microphone wana kuchekerea. As we speak, they call wananiuliza sasa unajua sasa tunaona hii online eh tunaweza nini? So the best time to start is now. Nimemaliza dakika zangu tano. Uko na deni yangu ya ngapi? Bado bado. Ya mbili. Ako na deni ya mbili. Sasa swali lenye kila mtu anajiuliza. Yeah, yeah. Content creation. Mm. Tunaongea juu ya the future skills mm. what mm. the next generation will mm. need to have. What does it take to be an influencer? What what would you what advice would you give to somebody who, who is interested in content creation as as a career and mm. a, a source of livelihood? Awesome. Now um influencer nilikuwa nataka ku break you. Influencer it's such a huge it's such a huge uh, word so i wanted to break it down to before you become an influencer what do you do and this is what people don't realize and, and it's it's tricky especially now you tunasema online it may come so it might be construed as it's easy to make it which is not the truth mm. look at the greatest influencer of our times cristiano ronaldo that guy is just being paid for posting a ridiculous amount of money probably he makes a lot of money on influencing that he makes on on football yeah. but for that guy I, I i wish guys followed the guy for that guy to have such physique for that guy to be able to do what he does on the pitch it, yeah. it takes a lot more than your time kulikuwa na corona anakimbia kwa swimming pool na wewe uko tu hapo you just want to you must work towards that and and i think ni kitu because, because nowadays tunaona mtu anakuja anaweka picha mbili tatu akikaa hivi akikaa hivi akikaa hivi with economy na clothes which well atapata followers but i keep saying influencing is not about numbers naweza kuwa na numbers because wanapenda gamaso zangu but when it comes to the actual influencing because influencing about ku influence tabia culture and thinking it's more than just how i look it's maybe how i live what i do so before jugush came to be this influencer there is that work that was put in that people at times are not uh, people at times are not willing to to to, to work towards ju jana nimepata dm <laughs> nilicheka at jugush hata sina time ya salamu nataka unipost nipate followers i was a little bit concerned so nikamuuliza eh eh alafu ukipata niko na content na sina platform so i think kuna nini to make get like it's easy to make unfortunately you'll have to work there is a reason why mtoto huzaliwa kwanza anatembea hivi anaamka anashikilia meza anaanza kukula there is a reason why we have and as much as time changes some things will never change you must work hard hiyo hiyo nayo hakuna uongo na, na vile uh, caroline anasema it's true some have talent but there's people who work hard na ndio unasikia ngao watu wakisema huyo hata sio mfane sijui hata kwa nini huwa na get why is because some people work very hard and the end justifies the means another question Thanks 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 a lot. Ni realize I have to nini ni zikule time mingi. No tuko yeah. karibu ku we just want to open it up to the audience. Kama uko na swali to Jugush the king of online comedy. This is your time. And uh, kuna mtu anasema I would love to meet you. I can not, can offer an op- an op- can you offer an appointment please from University of Eldoret. That for for now i think because of corona and, and but 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 you, you never know we might meet ni is it a he or a she <laughs> it's, it's a he it's a he it's amazing so i think um you never will, will meet but i try as much as possible to be able to if i get platforms like this and actually absa thank you so much for creating such platforms because for the longest time i think youths tumekuanga ni wale wana huko wapewe t-shirt wapewe sijui nini umbrella tunakuja tuna dance issue kuna dancing competition and that's it so when we start i think talking about this i think this is really good especially for young guys kama sisi tungekuwa na such platforms when coming up maybe tungekuwa mbele sana yeah great yeah. Uh, the audience will request you if you have questions ni kama watu ulikuwa una unaongea na una questions ilikuwa part of the nilichanganya hii lakini niliona hiyo ndio nimepewa lazima tukimbie okay so uh, as questions come yeah we have we have a very youthful audience mm. when you want to take a kama njugush mm. mm. when you want to take make it la- in life mm. in several aspects yeah. from njugush scripts yeah. from your own personal experiences mm. and your beliefs mm. 
ni nini ungetaka wafanye so i think you can never be like in jogush and uh, uh, what we are looking is what you have and and this way i think guys get it wrong uko na kitu then you are distracted by what you are seeing around like for example i'll say na sitaogopa kusema unaona mrembo wa machadi ako na kamwili kazuri ameposta amepata likes wewe uko hapa unasukumana na content uchekeshe watu unapata likes tatu you give up unaanza na wewe kusema he hata mimi kumbe nakuanga na mwili niko na tumaso naweza post little did you know what you have is what people are looking for people are not looking for another jugush they are looking for a flaco they are looking for a crazy kena they are looking kwa ni cartoon comedian hana mwili ya ku post they are looking for hilary they want something that's going to be a little bit sustainable they want something that um at the end of the day kesho unaweza ifanya tena is it presentable mm-hmm. so i think uh when you say you want to be like njogush ni fiti mm-hmm. but i think what comes is what you have be consistent because most of the times una post leo una choka una post kesho unapata likes mbili unaacha na hiyo kitu but i think when you keep because if you look like i'll give a case scenario cartoon comedian that lady alianza ku post kitambo sana but we didn't notice those to li notice his is a e zenye zina zina nini and then after that people now start going so keep doing what you're doing and be consistent because leo ni ki post kesho ni post 3 weeks later mtu anakuja kwa page yangu aone kitu hata kuwa na reason ya kurudi after 4 5 weeks so i think consistency and and believing in what you're doing consistency and believing in what you are doing mm. very powerful uh, there is a question here from uh, a gentleman is asking what is your advice to young people in regards to social media posts beautiful i i, I hope he can come up but but i have to be blunt with them um so, social media it's beautiful and at the same time uh, uh, see of it because we show and especially us in the limelight we show what you, we want you to see I'll post the best car maybe hata si yangu ndio ka picha nyuma ya gari to create to create an illusion niko nyuma ya V8 sijasema ni yangu but nitapiga picha hapo next time nitafuta nyingine ya black kama hiyo that's what you see you want to be like that guy but si post madeni niko nazo si post kwenye nalala ni wangapi wetu tuna post bedroom zetu ndio muone vile tumefinyana <laughs> how to post your but we post what we want you to see na post nikikula why is it we have the urge of posting ukiwa na chakula poa wakati na fanyana mkimona na na chai uko kwa nini si post we post what we want you to see and not even us your peers which are even worse unajua mimi utasema niko huko your peers unaona best yako leo wako malindi kesho wako watamu kesho wako trukana anateremka kwa desert kesho wako baringo unauliza mungu wako kwani nilifanya nini wachana na pressure we have everyone akona time yake mimi niko na time yangu and kama kuna kitu mimi nimelan kundu kutosheka mahali kwa that's why sio kupange ku post kuku zangu juu mimi naishi chako and that's where i am when it becomes time ya kuishi kama JZ nitaishi hivyo but as long as you are happy where you are as long as umetoshea hapo hakuna happiness hiyo kuja kutokana na hiyo ukishajikubali that's it and it's going to be easy jua kuna kitu ngumu kama kumaintain kashati nikuja na kashati leo alafu lazima ni tag sijui duka 22 Thank you thank you. Juu kashati narudisha na naogopa kusweat sana na kaa hivi. Kaa vile huko usiachana na pressure because those people wanaenda na pressure alafu baadaye hawaonyeshangi what happens after the pressure. So usikimizane na dunia. Guka yangu hakuweza, guka yangu yangu hakuweza. Mimi ndio nitaweza. Kwa nini niko na nguvu aje? Yeah, so I think when it comes to online and and hii ni kitu inapatia watu hii depression. Eh juna chiki vitu zina happen left right and center. Wewe kwako hakuna. But it's because we are only posting what we want you to see. Thank you. Wow powerful be content with who you are and what you have so social media i think uh, that that's a very powerful statement there and juguna cuz uh, we've seen in the past uh, what has been reported in the news and with regards to s- social media usage and it's it's prudent that uh, our young people uh, wajue that uh, the, the picture and uh, the narrative i project on social media may not be the same uh, the same thing the mm. in reality as 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 my day to day life mm. so we need not to be uh, just de- de- uh, just be taken aside from the reality mm. njuguna kuna watu wanakushukuru sana they they love what you do Nash- and uh, Nash- one nashukurika <laughs> <laughs> so our last question yeah. what are the advice to the youth concerning becoming mwenye pesa within a week Uh, I I think that eh uh, me unless you metoka wapi that never happens there's always a story hiyo yenye unaona imehappen soon there is a story kwani amezaliwa saa hiyo 
there is no it, I, I say success is when uh, uh, opportunity meets preparedness kama niko ready alafu usikia nani hapa anaweza fanya abcd i'm ready so i'll go so i think there's nothing as overnight sensation you must work na hakuna kitu tamu kama story hebu niambie kama si ingekuwa kama yangu ingekuwa overnight jana ndio nimekuwa celeb sasa hapa ningekuwa nasema nini ningekuwa nasema niliamka jana nikapigiwa simu you see so it, kuna hata hiyo tamu ya kugiginya ya kusumbuana unasumbuana until you get to pale and i'll say something i always say prove them wrong mimi watu wengi wameniambia wewe unajua college mimi nilikuwa nimetoka ushago hapa napata mimi hata kwetu content creation mimi sikuwa najua napata hapa watoto tuko college hao ndio wanaandika script na wana direct na si ndio hatuna mwalimu sikuwa hiyo na hivyo but you you prove them wrong i prove them mpaka nilienda ku act nikambo oh shai act toka tutakunini nani kam lubino watu wa chavakali wanaitwa wanapiga show mimi niko pale but proving the wrong is proving them wrong is very kuna mtu alisema siwezi fanya stand up this year and then god it happened before covid we did a sold out show kwanza watu walikuwa na shida sasa wewe watu watakuja we did a sold out show stand up comedy ile ya microphone so sasa hii maybe nime graduate niko kwa comedians you know so it's 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 all about pushing and and to see to see to because tuna pushing ino na umefika there's a reason why tulifanya hiyo ttnt and you, you don't know hatulali work until watu wakuita katel eh ni yetu anafanyanga eh ni juu umechapa kazi you are not working for bure and it never stops wow 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 inspiring and uh, if i could go through all the comments you are doing a good job and you keep keep doing what you are doing asante uh, you are, we have very wonderful comments coming from your fans asante just appreciating what you are doing asante. and they are urging you to keep inspiring other up, upcoming uh maybe content creators mm. and uh, people who want to make it in their respective fields kabisa kabisa so sasa tunataka kushukuru sana thank you thank you for sharing your insights and above all for making time to this to come for this session shukran you have a lot of followers a lot of uh, uh people who look up to you we just want to request you to keep just in molding this society because the world is looking for men and women mm. who will be able to just motivate the next generation Kampis. and thank you for the job that you are doing asante hata nyinyi asante sana for having us and especially for this platform because i believe it's 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 beautiful because mimi peke yangu singeweza kufanya hivi so i think uh, it, it's a beautiful thing you're doing and we are ready to work me personally i'm ready to work are you you ni swali ni swali kwao Asante. <laughs> thank Asante. you so much. So this so, is where I live, eh? Yes. Okay, thank you guys. I know you miss me. I miss myself too. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Can you give your hand to Jugush? <laughs> What a session. What a power panel. So excited to have had this session, ladies and gentlemen. Just to summarize um, a few things that uh, insights that have come through. Our first panelist Christina Rono talked to us largely about things that she's she, she's been, been able to pick from her professional practice as a people business partner. One of the things she talked about being writing your CV, she said that don't 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 just write a general CV for all for all opportunities. Tailor make it based on the opportunity that is at hand. She also talked about being, getting ready for interviews and for the job market. Just just make make be be very deliberate about the process and ensure that you are ready for the interview. Don't take it for the for granted. And last but not least, she mentioned something around the future of work, future skills. She talked about resilience social adaptability and more importantly being able to survive in the new technological era are you ready to embrace these skills if you are not then probably you might not be ready uh, to thrive in the future caroline mutoko just summarizing based on her personal experiences and her personal life talked more about what it takes to succeed and one of the things that and very many people in the audience were able to drive from her speech one of the things she mentioned is that bloom where you are planted if 
you are presented with an opportunity, take it with both hands and show it, show that you can be able to deliver. She also mentioned that discipline beats talent any day. Put in the work, go an extra mile, give it your best. Our last speaker, who is Njugush, it didn't just occur overnight that he became an, an, a renowned uh, content creator. He has mentioned to us the need to be consistent and above all, just to prove them wrong. Do it your, to your level best that in the future they will be referring to you as a cartel because you've been able to succeed beyond their imaginations. So go out there and give it your best. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me utmost pleasure and honor to thank you sincerely for choosing this session and leaving all other preoccupations that you could have just to attend this session. We pray and hope that the insights that you've been able to gain and gather from this session will impact you your life and the lives of those around you in a positive way. As we close, I would want to urge you to look forward to more ready-to-work sessions which we'll be able to organize and be part of APSA Bank Kenya Limited. We value you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. God bless. Africanacity is Lona Ruto recycling plastic waste into fencing poles that preserve the planet. At ABSA, we love Africanacity and believe in working with you to get things done. Africanacity is Paul Kihuha turning scrap metal into affordable film equipment. At ABSA, we love Africanacity and believe in working with you to get things done.